Hello everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie, thank you for joining me. A um, little bit of extra videos that I'm gonna kind of be sprinkling in the channel over the next month or so, just trying to create more content at the end of 2022. And as promised, I would come back and kind of do a part two to some of the videos that I already did. Um, so I wanna actually spend today uh, doing my second look um, at Jupiter moving back into the mutable water sign of Pisces. So if you guys have not already seen the first video that I did, I shot it back in May of 2021. So it's been a good eight months or so since um, I've taken a look at that and I'm excited because as of later this evening, we are actually going to see Jupiter move back into Pisces. So for the last time in 12 years, uh, we are having um, Jupiter in Aquarius. So having Jupiter been in, in a Saturn-based sign has been a little sweet and salty, especially the last several years having Saturn and Jupiter in Saturn-based signs. So if you think all the way back to like 2019 going into 2022, Saturn and Jupiter were um, together in the sign of Capricorn, very Saturn-based, and then it moved together also into Aquarius in 2021. So I'm, I'm excited to see it go back into Pisces. I'm very excited to take a look at some of the aspects that it's gonna be making throughout the next year. Um, certainly we got a little bit of a preview it's funny, I said when I was filming it in May of this year, I was actually um, just kind of traveling and I was in New Orleans and it was like pouring. And I remember when I was visiting, we had parked the car like two blocks over and we go to like get into the car packing up to leave and we go to open the door and like the water was all the way almost to like the actual um, like seal of where the door opened. So I remember looking around being like, oh my goodness, is this, is this a precursor of some of the stuff that's coming? So I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about um, just some studying that I've been doing um, on the aspects that it's making, some excerpts that I have um, and some books that I've been taking a look at. I will really focus a lot on um, also the conjunction that it will be making to um, Neptune. So I think that's gonna be really fascinating. Just doing some research and looking at it. it, looks like we haven't had Jupiter and Neptune come together since 1856. So I've got a list of some stuff that kind of happened that year. It's kind of hit or miss. Um, I think what's different is that we are going to see lots of physical change, um, earth changes, things actually being created. We're growing things in new ways is what I'm feeling with the sextile to both the North Node and Uranus in Taurus. And um, it's also gonna make some aspects to Pluto and Capricorn. So it's gonna be interesting to see this earth and water energy kind of work together um, and how that actually manifests in kind of creating new structures um, based off of what we're visualizing or believing in. So we'll break that down a little bit for you. If you guys are not already um, subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing. Hit the bell button so you get alerts so you know when I have videos that are coming out. Also, those of you guys who are interested, I have memberships. Um, those of you guys who are some of my members, you're super awesome. You make it possible for me to have time to study, create some of this content for you and bring more information to this channel. So if you like it, please do consider joining my memberships. There's three different tiers and um, even if you can't, just by uh, sharing and commenting, you help get my videos into the queue and help other astrology lovers hear what I have to say. So I appreciate that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into some notes that I have for Jupiter and Pisces. Now, if you are somebody who's already seen my first video, I may touch on some of the things that I already kind of spoke about, but I'm gonna give you guys some, some different perspectives now that I've seen Jupiter go into the sign. Um, so just for starters, uh, Jupiter moving into the mutable sign of Pisces is going to affect, obviously, Pisces, sun, moon, and risings in a very, very significant way. Um, so when we think about Jupiter, right, we think about um, expansion, wandering, learning, um, believing. Jupiter is uh, traditionally seen as one of the rulers of Pisces, um, not just Neptune, that's modern day astrology. So Jupiter was believed to be the ruler of Pisces, and it's also associated with the sign of Sagittarius. So. Jupiter being in a water sign, unlike being in the mutable fire sign, is more um, everything melding together. <laughs> it's kind of like everything melting and coming into this pot 
um, especially when we think of Pisces being um, the ruler of the 12th house and it's where everything comes together and um, gets ready to kind of fulfill the new cycle then moving into Aries. So what's interesting about this year is that we are going to see that Jupiter is going to move quite quickly um, and eventually move into the sign of Aries. So it's going to start a new cycle and then it's going to dip back into Pisces before finally moving back into Aries, I believe at the end of the year of 2022, beginning of 2023. We'll look at that. Um, but if you are a Pisces, sun, moon, or rising, um, expect expansion, good luck, emotions, deeper, deeper spiritual experiences, more joy, optimism, and your intuition just being on high alert. Um, and not in a bad way, but just, I think of like Jupiter and Neptune in the sign as um, you have to believe it in order to see it, right? Because Neptune is invisible. Um, and when Jupiter goes into the sign of Pisces, it doesn't know any boundaries. I almost think of like, you know, if you take a cup, you fill the cup up with water, obviously you can see that it's, con you know, contained. Um, it's almost like pouring water onto the floor and just seeing it go everywhere. So literally we may see this with flooding and rising in sea levels. We may see um, certain coastal cities experience torrential rains, um, especially, you um, you know, parts of the world who are already used to getting hit with tsunamis, hurricanes, uh, perhaps even um, uh, um, not hurt, not just tsunamis and hurricanes, but just flooding in general, we may see a rise of that. So I think to some extent, certainly certain parts of the world could use that. We've had a lot of dryness having had Jupiter and also Saturn in um, Saturn-based signs for the last couple of years. I'm hoping that the positive side of this is that we create new like waterways. Maybe it's possible to bring water from certain areas to other places where we are experiencing droughts or dryness or issues with crops. Um, on the flip side, I feel like it's gonna do so much on an emotional and on a spiritual level. So I'll kind of talk about both of that today. So just if you're Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising, know that um, it's quite prominent for you. If you wanna know how this is gonna affect you, stay to the end of the video. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how it's gonna affect each and every one of the 12 signs, depending on where Jupiter and Neptune um, are coming together in your chart and equally what they rule. So who is going to be impacted by this the most? Obviously, aside from uh, Pisces placements, we're also gonna see that the water signs are actually gonna benefit quite a bit from this. Um, so if you are a Scorpio or if you are a Cancer, you will be experiencing trines both from Jupiter and Neptune. Now, just sidebar, um, I, I have a lot of planets in Scorpio and I have actually been experiencing Neptune um, trine, both my Pluto, my Sun, and my Mercury for the better part of like the last two or three years. I'm actually just finally wrapping up this trine. People hear trines and they get really excited because they're like, oh, it's gonna be easy energy, but it can also be something just, just blasts you out. So it's more personal in my chart, but I have experienced um, the Neptune trying to these water planets is just highly emotional. <laughs> very emotional, very sensitive, um, really intense dreams, precognitive dreaming. Um, it's also um, made me extremely sensitive to certain subjects, um, excuse me, certain um, materials. So like eating certain things, drinking certain things. Um, especially liquids. I've just noticed that my tolerance for certain medications or even for alcohol has majorly changed. Um, I think the other way that it has affected me is it has made me a lot more compassionate and understanding and almost to a point where it's a little, a little too empathic, where it can be hard to kind of differentiate, differentiate my feelings or emotions from other people. So Trines, although they are harmonious, they are the energy of um, Jupiter when we're experiencing a trine. Having these trines, if you are a water sign, may be extremely, extremely emotional for you. So you may notice that you're just more sensitive than usual. Maybe you're more aware of your emotions. You're crying at the drop of a hat, depending on where it is in your chart. Um, and your intuition, I think, is gonna be on high. Having any significant water placement in your chart, sun, moon, rising, already is going to kind of put you in that category of being somebody who is more kind of tuned in and emotionally aware, or some would say um, psychic, right? So the trines may enhance that. You may see more of that. 
And as it comes into conjunction with Neptune, which is intuition, spirituality, um, feeling very um, connected to everything or feeling um, almost like this enchantment is just gonna blow it out of the water. So it's really important if you are a water sign or if you have a water placement, sun, moon, and rising, that you're prepared for this because Water is very different than a lot of the other elements. You know, fire has a tendency to just want to burn things down or it wants to um, actually initiate or it wants to have conflict or it wants to kind of like give you the razzle dazzle. Earth is very practical and very logical. So we see these steps that are taken and you have to physically change things. We've had a lot of air trines this year. So certainly we've seen that manifest as um, a real emphasis in communication and ideas and sharing and stuff and emails and technology. So it's gonna be interesting to see um, the significant movement of Jupiter and Neptune together also um, working hand in hand with Pluto, which is even in Capricorn, it's still a very kind of water energy um, and also working with the North Node. So just be prepared if you've got um, any Scorpio or Cancer or Pisces placements that you just may notice this wave of sensitivity, um, especially if it's making trines to like, let's say your um, ascendant, you know, the body may be more empathic, more sensitive. If it's making trines to um, your sun, it's gonna be more, um, I think, optimistic and um, much more spiritual or um, in the sense of practicing your beliefs or mantras or meditations. Um, but if it's making aspects to your moon or maybe even your Mercury, that's definitely, I think, going to be much more intuition um, or your Pluto as well. You may, if you have like a, you know, if you have a, a Pluto in, in Scorpio, um, that generation, I think, is really going to feel this um, in, a, in a very big, big, big way. If you are a mutable sun, moon, or rising, so if you are a um, Gemini or a Sag or... Um, a Virgo or a Pisces, obviously. Pisces will have it a little bit easier. I think the other mutable signs are, are definitely gonna feel. Jupiter squares, in a way, are more like um, overdoing it. <laughs> it's becoming too optimistic or like um, thinking that you can um, hit certain um, goals and, and maybe um, taking on or biting off a little bit more than you can chew, right? So there may be this sense of certain squares uh, amplifying situations in your life. Now, Jupiter squares aren't so bad. You just wanna watch overdoing it. So like Jupiter square, the ascendant uh, may manifest as this feeling of needing more space, um, especially if Jupiter's going into your fourth house, um, you know, and it can also affect your waistline. There can be a sense of you gaining weight. So uh, sad risings can experience this as can um, Pisces risings placements. Um, but the mutable signs I think are going to experience it as like growing pains. Jupiter says like, hey, we got to go big or go home. And there is some need to expand on these areas of your life, especially being a mutable rising sign. You're going to experience the square to um, all four angles of your chart. So it's going to amplify and get the wheel of your chart to turn um, and kind of open up your first, fourth, seventh and tenth all together. So I know those of you guys who are especially... Um, Sag and Gemini placements this last year, you're like, I've had enough, I'm done <laughs> with the eclipses and the nodal uh, changes. Um, but I would say actually the um, transit of Jupiter into Pisces, um, it, it may make you more emotional, but I think it's also going to make you realize that um, you, you have the most growth that's going to come from really paying attention to your visions, paying attention to where you expand rubber Pisces in your chart that in a way there is like this spiritual enlightenment that's going to happen, which then in turn affects everything else. So like I said, I'll talk about how it's going to affect all of the signs. Don't worry, stay to the end. Uh, earth signs. I mean, listen, you know, earth and water makes mud, right? <laughs> so those two together, uh, mix very well. I'm especially excited to see um, the earth signs benefit from this because we have um, Uranus, obviously, that's in Taurus. We're going to have the North Node that's in Taurus. We've got Pluto that's in Capricorn. So I'm, I'm really digging how this is going to positively affect Tauruses, um, also Capricorns, and um, yeah, pretty much all, all of the earth sign family, you're going to see that things really kind of come together quite nicely for 
you. So Capricorn, Taurus, Virgos, you guys are all going to see those sextiles, which is more of Venusian energy. It's going to be the energy of kind of um, supporting one another as long as you do that work. So it's almost kind of preparing you for in a couple of years when we start to see Jupiter moves through Aries and then it moves into Taurus and it'll conjunct Uranus that there can be some sense of abundance somewhere kind of that you've been building towards for a very long time. So what themes are we going to see with um, Jupiter moving into um, Pisces? So I think of like spirituality, spirituality being um, extremely popular at an all time high, right? So, um, you know, Pisces being themes like meditation, astral travel, lucid dreaming, um, you know, uh, shamanic work in some traditions, they believe the 12th house can represent that. Um, anything relating to dreams, sleep, um, the bedroom is what we see traditionally with the 12th house or Pisces. So I feel like there's gonna be um, a great emphasis on learning more about what we do when we sleep um, what we see, exploring more in regards to um, dreams and even perhaps other dimensions. <laughs> I definitely think that's going to be something that's going to happen. I wonder with the trines and aspects to uh, Pluto in Capricorn, um, if there's going to be new insights about time travel. And if we're starting to see more or learn more about um, how time works and um, if time is actually linear or not. Um, I think we're also going to see lots of things that are going to come out about um, uh, uh, film and cameras. That's something else, something that I'll touch on a little bit in terms of um, timing and history, because I think that's really prominent. Jupiter is always... It's not just travel, it's expansion, it's knowledge, it's information. So I'm, I'm excited to see how this manifests in a sense of um, learning more about cinematography. And we're gonna see probably advancement in those areas, new screens, new technologies. Definitely we're gonna go deep into um, Jupiter, Neptune in really the last degrees of Pisces. So this will manifest as a lot to do with like actors and actresses, um, celebrities in that sense, um, them being on screen, bigger screens, bigger movies. Um, so it's gonna be really great for that industry. But also when I think of screens, I think of this artificial uh, reality and all these things that are being created with like the Oculus and you know where we're going with um, all of these other worlds that we are creating on the internet. So I'm kind of like, I'm trying to say neutral because I feel like on one hand, it can be very positive. It can give us the opportunity to um, learn more about some of these topics, maybe make it possible for us to um, have movies that are more readily available from home that would be kind of cool, right? Especially if we have issues physically going to the theaters. Um, I think it's going definitely going to bring more topics and themes of spirituality to the big screen. So we may have um, documentaries and movies and um, shows and even subscriptions and networks that are going to be more um, uh, putting an emphasis on spirituality, which is really cool. Really, all I've really seen is kind of like Gaia. And I've gone in and out of that. I, I'm kind of like, eh, about it. Um, but I'm more interested to see more about education, less about like aliens and UFOs, um, more about, okay, well, this is how you practice breath work. And this is how you you know, practice kundalini yoga and here are the mantras and, you know, putting the gurus and the teachers in your living room and giving you the opportunity to have the experience of being able to learn with anybody internationally, even if you're not there. So in that sense, I'm kind of stoked about it. And I go back and forth with like, well, the metaverse, you know, does it make sense to get involved in this? Wouldn't it be cool to be able to have a reading with me and you could see me do, you know, the card reading and the astro reading in the metaverse? Like, that's so cool. Like giving us the opportunity after several years of not being able to do in-person sessions to have that experience without physically being there. But then I think about what happens when we take the Oculus off and we're living in this like dystopian reality and maybe we've given away our Neptune um, in, in the first half of 2022 and we realize that we're living life through a screen and we're not actually connecting. Um, it makes me concerned about also the rise in the darker side of um, spirituality and how we may see that those who are already very kind of um, clinging to their beliefs or their ideas 
um, may become more extreme on both ends, right? So finding that middle ground and exterior I think is going to be challenging for people who um, may already be deeply involved in a particular um, religion and they're already having conflicts and then it gets a little bit weirder, right? So organized religion especially, we're gonna see this a lot because that's what Neptune rules, rules churches. Um, you know, Neptune and Jupiter coming together, I think you're gonna see the possibility of like a real chokehold in certain organized religions and this feeling of um, needing to maintain um, certain um, practices and beliefs and rituals, right? On the flip side, it goes both ways. So it's not just going to be about possibly like the Catholic Church or, or certain um, religions getting a little weirder or a kind of more fixated on their beliefs and their, their, their views. I think of like somebody running around with a sign on Hollywood Boulevard being like, the end is near. Like, this is the kind of stuff we're gonna see next year. Um, but spirituality, right? And spirituality being something that's so mainstream that in a way it's like, you, you can go on Amazon and you can buy your sage and you can buy all of your spiritual goodies and things. Um, and it's so readily available. It's um, definitely a trending topic with Jupiter and Neptune coming together next year. But are we becoming um, a culture where it's just, we just accept anything at face value. It's like, oh, just buy this and it'll magically make everything go away. Or, you know, pay me the thousand dollars to go through an online course to become a shaman, right? So it makes me wonder like, mm, you know, is this going to be something where we're just accepting anything um, that's being fed to us or being told to us, right? So I guess some of the cons that we would see would be like excessiveness, loss of, lock of, loss, excuse me, loss of boundaries, um, talking or teaching about subjects that we really don't know anything about or we can't fully comprehend, um, being immersed in screens, drugs, alcohol, energetic drains, escapism. So it's like we're gonna see both and certainly I'm aware that the um, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction is happening um, before, in 2023, we see Saturn ingress into Pisces, right? So I'm thinking down the line that over the next couple of years, we're going to see Saturn go into Pisces, Saturn will conjunct Neptune, Saturn and Neptune are going to be the last degrees of Pisces before Neptune and Saturn actually begin to ingress together into Aries. When will that be? Um... So I can give you guys a timeline of about how long this is going to take. Looks like both Saturn and Neptune will be in Pisces in 2024. But we see Saturn and Neptune begin to ingress spring, summer of 2025. So, you know, about three years. And the last degrees of Pisces is, is um, you know, they say like, beware the Ides of March, right? So we think of like the excessiveness of Pisces. It's gonna become super spiritual or super isolated and secluded, right? So super connected and, and spiritual and understanding and um, very connected to everybody. Um, and to some extent willing to help self-sacrificial um, or it's going to be everybody in like kind of pandemonium and, and panic mode and, and fear zone, right? So things get a little weird and wacky as we come to the end of any mutable sign, but especially Pisces, because it's where everything is kind of unfolding before we start something that's new. So it may be an interesting couple years here before we get to that point. And maybe at some point, maybe we do see the fall of organized religion. I mean, I know that that's a little crazy to say, but I, I have a feeling that that's kind of the direction that things are going. You know, there's definitely going to be suppression, I think. They're going to try to also suppress um, secrets and uh, secret societies or um, cults or anything like that also. So that'll also, not just because of the conjunction, but um, actually the sextile to Pluto that is taking place as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, what am I excited for? How it's going to impact creativity and the arts. I think that's the one thing that is going to be the most amazing is 
almost like this renaissance period that is going to come about from this next year, um, especially when we start to see that like Venus ingresses into Pisces. So that'll be happening a lot, um, pretty much the whole month of April. You know, Venus and Jupiter coming together in Pisces, I don't think it gets any sweeter than that. Um, and it's definitely going to be very welcomed <laughs> um, after um, watching Venus getting closed between Mars and Saturn in Aquarius. Um, when does that happen? So we've got Mars and Venus that are going to come together after this very long retrograde. And that'll be happening pretty much the whole month of March. And then once we get Venus away from Mars and Saturn, it calms down a little bit and it'll conjunct um, Neptune and Jupiter around April, you know, 27th on. So yeah, I mean, there's just, it's going to be kind of hit or miss next year, I think, with the Venus transits. Um, and if you guys want to know more about that, um, I'm, I, I will probably have already put it out. Um, watch my New Year's video where I go into all of the most important transits of 2022. But yeah, getting back to how it's going to affect, um, you know, art and creativity, I feel like perhaps maybe through the isolation, there is going to be um, a lot more um, divine inspiration and connection to the higher self and um, ways of being able to express oneself. And perhaps maybe that was the point all along. I thought a lot about like what the purpose has been um, of the pandemic, you know, why we have been here, why we have been isolated and separated. Um, because to some extent, when we think about Saturn or when we think about um, the energy of to step back and be alone and reflect and have that, you know, Saturn can be a depressive energy. We think about um, what what that creates for us, and it gives us that moment to start thinking about our beliefs and then building back up and going back uphill. So we've we're coming out of two years of being isolated, not being really around um, people, um, being or living to some extent in fear of a virus, Neptune. Um, but we've seen the rise of um, some artists that have come out with some pretty awesome new music, some pretty awesome albums, or coming even out of seclusion or hiding themselves. Look at what's gone on with Britney Spears this entire last year, this uh, fight that's been going on to um, free her from her conservatorship. And now she talks about you know making music that's more authentic to her um, and not wanting to perform. We look at um, Adele, who's really kind of uh, come out and uh, made quite a statement with just all of the physical changes, but also probably her, I would have to say, one of her best albums yet, um, talking a lot about um, how she's been processing and, and dealing with her divorce. Very interesting that she went through her Saturn's return. She made a couple comments about her Saturn tattoo, which was interesting because she was aware that she was in her return. And I think we're going to see more in this next year of artists who are putting out work that is very divine and very inspirational. We may see music also that is um, sampling or taking from certain cultures and really highlighting certain cultures because of Jupiter. We may see that there is some integration also of a lot more gospel music or soul music or, or things that may be more associated with uh, religious kind of practices or church. That's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Um, I'm excited to see how this manifests with the sextiles to Uranus and Taurus, where this rise in digital art, uh, futuristic art, um, stuff that can be kept on screens or viewed on screens. I'm wondering if that's going to like manifest into a whole people having digital, you know, um, art galleries in their home, or maybe they've got, you know, new, um, uh, like, not borders, but like frames, and you can just go through and you can show whatever you know art you wanna see. Is it gonna give us the opportunity or the ability to start taking digital tours through some of the world's most prestigious um, museums and being able to see art pieces and things that we wouldn't usually see? I, I think that that's something that I saw, I got the Oculus like a couple months ago and I was going through and kind of playing with it. You can see some things, but I don't think you can see it in real time. So I'm wondering if that's gonna be something that's possible. But I'm really excited to see what it does for um, you know, art and music in general, and that it's really gonna produce some great stuff really all next year. And it doesn't necessarily have to come out next year. Um, I, I am learning as I get more and more into 
creating these forecasts that, yeah, there's the benefit of doing it early before, you know, we see planets ingress into certain signs. Um, but I have found that I really like working with um, the planets actually in that sign when I talk about it, because it's going to be a little bit easier to um, kind of kind of touch base with that planet. So I'm sure I will talk more about this probably in February, March, maybe even May of 2022, and just kind of wrap this up because it will eventually ingress into Aries for a little bit. So then we'll get a sneak peek of Aries. The downside though, is that I think we're gonna see just a real uptick in um, escapism and drugs. And um, I guess that can go one of two ways. Escapism being more like wanting to um, isolate ourselves and not acknowledge certain issues, emotional, spiritual, um, psychological. We may find that there is a tendency to lean on Neptunian things, so becoming more um, fixated or um, uh, in a way reliant on um, certain pharmaceutical companies or medications. Um, alcohol, you can't really talk about Neptune without talking about alcohol or liquids. And so I'm wondering if that's going to materialize as just people using substances more next year to cope, right? And so I think about, you know, what's going to happen in 2022, God forbid, we're in a situation where we see a continuation of um, social, you know, social isolation or limitation or social distancing um, and the effects that it's going to start to have when Jupiter and Neptune come together if people are going to start really having some real spiritual crisis issues, which could perhaps lead to a rise in, um, you know, of, uh, of suicide. So, you know, I don't, I don't say that lightly. I really don't. Um, I think that it's not talked about enough, you know, this year that we've seen so many people who have been actually dying from overdoses, so many people who are dying from having complications from depression um, or other psychological issues as a result of the isolation. It's not, we're not getting it out there. We're also seeing all kinds of stories in the news about, um, you know, basically drugs being tampered with, um, there being a rise of uh, people who are overdosing from fentanyl and other issues like that from narcotics, um, you know, being cut with other things. So that's not going to go away. We're going to see more of that. In fact, that might be something that's just a real uptick, um, especially I would say the first, you know, three, four months of 2022. On the other side, we could see commercialization of um, addictive substances, and we may see that certain countries um, start talking about or opting to um, basically make it possible for people to partake in that legally, and that there may be a way to commercialize these substances um, and make it possible for people to take it. So I don't know, like, eh, you know, it's like, I guess that if there's proper studies, like we think about, you know, what we're doing with like psilocybin and, um, you know, people learning more also about DMT uh, or perhaps um, but what they've been doing this last year that I've heard a lot about is like people using like ketamine for depression. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I just feel like we're going to see more of this. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they come back with after these studies are done, especially with the aspects that it's going to be making to the North Node, which is focusing more on what's grown, what's natural. So I'm, I'm interested to see more natural kind of grown remedies and things that may be um, kind of like, you know, psychoactive stuff that you could take that would be um, on the earthly plane, not something that is created in a lab. Although... Uh, Pisces does deal with chemistry, so we may see a real uptick in things that are being created in labs. Um, so we talked a little bit about how, you know, religious and spiritual phonetics are going to grow. I think we're definitely going to see uh, some cult leaders and some people who are going to be appearing as a result of these conjunctions and not in like the scary way that you would think. Um, more in like the I am holier than God on the second coming of, of Christ type stuff or I am the reincarnate of Buddha type stuff. I think we'll see a lot of this. Um, I laugh and I think about, was it like Joel Olstein? I think they found like, you know, thousands of dollars hidden away in his, in, his, <laughs> in, his, in his wall of a church, I think, or is his house? I don't know. But, um, and that, that was found by a plumber. And I remember like reading the article being like, oh my God, that's the sextile to Pluto. Um, and we're going to start to possibly see where 
um, the lines between donation and stuff that's illegal and more kind of crime oriented are um, coming up or where certain organizations are actually committing um, fraud or um, you know tax evasion, Pluto. So that may be something that comes up as well. Really moderation is like a big thing, right? And, and, and I've been thinking about this a lot, just knowing that this transit is coming and kind of going, well, you know, I don't want to be like sucked into the TV all the time, like not aware of what's going on and like don't want to be, you know, drinking um, wine every day and like doing things that's going to kind of dilute the Neptune transit for me. And, um, you know, to each their own, everybody's got to go at it, you know, their own way. But I feel like um, I'm, a, I'm a big um, like coach for telling people to like not give your Neptune away. Anything that's going to cloud your intuition, anything that's going to keep you from sleeping, from dreaming, from connecting. Um, I feel like inspiration is going to be so important next year with this transit that um, we may find um, divine inspiration in our daily lives. We don't have to go searching for it. It may just kind of appear especially, especially sometime between, I would say like mid-February and uh, May. That's definitely something that you guys are gonna see happen, especially when Venus and Jupiter uh, kiss um, next year. So let's talk about the aspects that they're gonna make. Um, obviously, you know, Jupiter conjunct Neptune is going to do its thing. Actually, I'm gonna read you guys a little um, excerpt from one of my books about that. So let me do that really quick. So this is a book that I love to go to, Planets and Aspect one of my OG books. Um, obviously, this is understanding more of these aspects in a natal chart, but um, nevertheless, it's still very applicable. So, so yeah, got to give credit where credit's due. So I was actually going through some of my books, and this is the one that I liked the best, so I'll read this to you. With Jupiter conjunct Neptune, you're inclined to do things to excess. You may talk about subjects you don't really understand or try to accomplish tasks beyond your capabilities. You trust others to maintain their confidences you share with them, carelessly assuming that, you deserve, that they deserve your trust. When you give others the benefit of the doubt, you may be disillusioned, for they often seem to deceive you. Your faith in people is deep, and you assign, and, but you assign blindly. Uh, you can be philosophical about people and hopeful that you'll find someone with whom you can confidently believe. From your experiences with others, you may learn lessons that help refine your judgment. You have a spiritual understanding of your social obligations, which you fulfill by offering your talents, inspiration, imagination whenever you can. There's always a danger of abuse from people who may try to capitalize on your willingness to serve others. Unless you are alert, this can also happen in your personal relationships. You may want to believe that your lover's feelings are for those are those of true love, and you may encourage the relationship to develop, hoping it will lead to marriage. Unless you learn to question everyone's motives relating to you, you may be disappointed. You must, dis you must develop respect for the harsh realities of your surroundings. Um, in your desire to experience the highest emotions and the most exquisite sensations, you risk aligning yourself with escapist fanaticism. Um, avoid drugs, cults, and irresponsible charlatans. <laughs> Obviously, this is going to be, you know, Jupiter, Neptune, transit, and a natal chart, but still, you'll see some of the same themes. So I think that you know, like I said, it's going to be um, obviously practicing moderation a lot next year, checking in with yourself, um, getting into the habit of like taking time to, to ask yourself, does this feel right? Right. Am I am I um, living life with my rose colored glasses on? Does it make sense for me to take a step back and ask myself if it really feels like it's in alignment? Um, so that's going to be a reoccurring theme. And it'll be interesting to see then Jupiter ingress into Aries. Um, because I think that once it does that, it's going to kind of show us a glimpse of the new cycle. We're putting something to kind of rest, right? Now, I talked a little bit about the sextile to Pluto. So we will see that um, Jupiter intermittently will be forming sextiles to Pluto. That'll basically be once Jupiter hits around, I don't know, 27 degrees. So looking at like the end of April of 2022. Um, the, the sextiles between the two I like, especially because Pluto and Capricorn is a lot about um, locking something down or um, focusing on um, a timely kind of rigid transformational routine. 
So I could see a future where there is some limitations, social limitations, travel limitations um, that's being orchestrated um, spiritually. Let's say it's divine to give us the opportunity to really do this work before Jupiter then ingresses into Aries and we're ready to go. So there may be this feeling in 2022 of like, the new year not quite being ready or new really until the end of May once Jupiter has ingressed into um, Aries and then also Mars will move into Aries as well. So I'm not telling you guys to hold off until May, June to do things. Obviously the world doesn't work that way. Um, but we are going to see that things are just going to start flowing a little bit better and we're going to start seeing um, things stick and there's more clarity and we're going to have more freedom and the ability to be more assertive and start new chapters when it comes to our personal beliefs. So just be mindful of that. Pluto is powerful and Jupiter is the visionary. So I could see where I guess the positive side is a lot of like, okay, this is this time schedule. I'm sticking to this. This is my routine. This is how I do things. I believe that I'm coming into this new way of life. Um, I believe that this is what's necessary um, in order for me to evolve. So that's the positive side of it. Uh, the other side of me kind of goes, well, Pluto and Capricorn is very much going to be about control and limitation with the sextile to Jupiter and Neptune, it's like we make these sacrifices for the greater good. Like how many times have we heard that in this last year, right? We heard it a lot when um, Jupiter and Pluto were in a sextile to Neptune. We saw a lot of control um, and limitations over that and sacrifices. And I think we're going to see it a little bit more until Jupiter moves into Aries. So two sides of it. Um, and then what I'm really liking is the trine that we are going to be seeing between Jupiter, Neptune, and the North Node. So the North Node will be in Taurus, really, us, really getting us into the body, um, getting us into a state of how we physically feel, how we eat, where our food comes from, what feels good, pleasure, our relationship with pleasure. Um, so I'm liking the aspects that are being made here um, pretty pretty early in the year actually let me look at this um when jupiter starts sextiling the north node pretty much as early as you know the end of march 2022 once jupiter is getting to like 21 ish degrees so you're going to see that at the end of march beginning of may Jupiter sextile, the North Node is basically saying, you know, this is where we're going. This is the vision that we have. This is what we're exploring. Um, I feel like that's going to um, really help us get more so into the physical body. So we might see that there's like a lot of teaching and learning and education about food, how we grow our food, where our food comes from, um, what we're putting on the television uh, relating to food, um, but also a lot more people wanting to learn more about finances, what's going on with their money. A lot of people buying programs and all kinds of things on the internet to learn how to invest, to learn how to, um, you know, mine a crypto. Like there's going to be a lot of that. There's going to be business for that. That's going to be coming up. We're going to see a lot of, um, I think financial gurus that are going to start kind of arising. There may be this beautiful merger between psychic, intuitive, uh, predicting, uh, even even maybe even astrology, right? I think, I mean, and we're seeing it on the internet. We're seeing a lot more people who are like, oh, I'm crypto astrologer. You know, I follow the trends of the moon cycles and when it's going to, you know, go up and when it's going to go down. That's quickly becoming um, an astrological like no, like niche on the internet. So I'm, I'm anticipating seeing more of that. Maybe um, people who are in the financial world who are becoming more interested in um, what people are predicting um, and some kind of merger there. You know, we've seen a lot of astrologers dip into it. Maybe we're going to see people in the financial world who are going to start hearing what um, astrologers have to say or what certain uh, market predictors are seeing for the future. I think we're going to start seeing more opportunities to grow um, and work with hydroponics and maybe uh, growing uh, food indoors, um, vertical farming, um, growing and working with the ocean, you know, how we are exploring more of the ocean, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pisces, going to further depths in the ocean, learning about what's there, learning more about, um, you know, the life that are within our seas 
and the potential for renewable energy to come from water, the potential for us to explore and find new places or even new treasures is the kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Um, there's the possibility that we uncover something in this next year that's very valuable from water. Are we going to find Atlantis? Man, I hope so. Are we going to find some pirate ship that sank and had a ton of gold coins in it? Maybe. You know, we may find something that we find very valuable in the water, but it can also be um, that that is a energy source that we start learning more about turbines and other things and how we can clean up the ocean, preserve the ocean, and find newer ways to be able to energetically, Uranus, keep this planet going, right? I think that um, on the flip side, there can be some real damage that can be done physically to the earth because of water. And I talked a lot about that in my first video, but we may see um, major changes in sea level, you know, certain coastal cities that experience massive storms, flooding, um, and real issues also with just water tables in general. So that's something else that I would be um, just aware of um, with these aspects. Now, when I go through time, just a couple things that I picked up from the last time we had the um, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, 1856. Just a couple things that kind of piqued my interest. One was um, February 19th, 18, what did I say? 1856. Uh, this is probably the most interesting one. The tintype camera patented by Hamilton Smith in, in uh, Ohio. By the way, this is from brainyhistory.com. I just pulled up the year just to see what was most interesting. Um, first national meeting of the Republican Party in Pittsburgh took place on February 22nd. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Opera House destroyed in a fire. The Covent Garden Opera House. That was March 5th. So the conjunction was happening like March, April. Uh, Georgia becomes the first state to regulate railroads. That's interesting. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Peace. That's something else. Jupiter and Neptune is peace. Um, so we may find that there are certain cease, you know, issues with conflict, especially within certain countries or borders. That just came to mind as I read this. Uh, March of this year, Russia signs Peace of Paris, ending the Crimean War. Let's see, uh, April 3rd of this year, gunpowder in church explodes, killing 4,000 people in Rhodos. Um, peace between England and Russia, the end of April of this year. May 19th, Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts speaks out against slavery. So that's interesting, especially um, because I see that, you know, Pisces can deal with people who are confined or they are kept or they're not allowed to be free. And whether this is um, at that time slavery, we may see more about the prison systems in this next year. We may see more that comes out about um, what we're doing for some of these people. There may be some big story that comes out about somebody who's been held hostage for a number of years and kept somewhere secret and then they escape and then they tell their story. I think we're going to hear something like that, unfortunately. Um, those are the ones that I found probably the most significant. Obviously, there were things that, that happened this year that spilled into the following year. I guess the one other thing I would say is the um, October 24th Constitution of South Australia is adopted. I think that's going to be interesting considering we're seeing the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction happening again and just the state of what's been going on in Australia with um, how they're handling the lockdowns and COVID. So that'll be something interesting to kind of watch. Just quickly, I want to show you guys also um, some of the more significant dates and how they are popping up. So you guys can make a note of that. So let me get these up for you. So let's pull this up. This is the real time clock. So Jupiter's gonna move into Pisces later this evening. We see that in March of 2022 is when we have that new moon that will be conjunct 
Jupiter and Neptune. Very magical time, very magical, very lucky new moon. That'll be on March 2nd, 2022. Then the sun comes into conjunction with Jupiter. We say this is the luckiest day of the year. <laughs> um, this will be on March 5th, 2022. We see the stellium of planets, Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, and the sun all in Pisces mid-March. That's an interesting time to watch. Definitely like a lot of feeling like things are wrapping up. And we've got Mercury conjunct Neptune. That's going to happen. Excuse me, Mercury conjunct Jupiter. Good news. The 19th through the 24th. Then Jupiter moves to conjunct Neptune. And this will be March 7th, excuse me, April 7th. Venus joins the gang. So this is uh, some particularly sweet transits, April 26th. Venus-Jupiter conjunction on April 30th. And then Jupiter moves into Aries on May 11th. So we get that real sweet, bit <laughs> and you can see it's kind of weird because we still have you know mars that's in pisces definitely not the easiest place to have pisces and then it's almost like we're off to the races with something at the end of may of 2022 now jupiter will go into the sign of aries it will retrograde back into pisces right about mid-october So it looks like it's going to be right here. October 28th. And it's interesting because it'll only drop down to, I believe, 28 degrees. Yes. And then it will move back into Aries. And that will be right around the end of December. So, you know, it, it, we may not really see the big, big, big changes happening until 2023, um, but certainly I would say things that are started around the end of May going into even June um, of 2022 is definitely going to pack quite a punch. So there may be this sense of the first four or five months of the year, just really focusing on visualizing our beliefs, our meditations, our vision boards, what we're practicing and really spiritually integrating before we take action. Just a word to the wise. A couple things that we'll see next year also is that um, while Jupiter is in Pisces, it will be in um, harsh aspect to the Mars retrograde in Gemini. So it actually really starts coming into a square with Neptune. This will be right around October, early October. Mars square Neptune is like, where are we going? Um, but it's also going to retrograde back and then continue to square Jupiter. So there's a lot of like, what direction are we going in? So just be mindful that, you know, the second half of 2022, the Mars square Neptune is a, a little bit of like, you're going to see some people being like, but I did this for you. I made this sacrifice for this, for that. And there's still some conflict, um, really up until we get into the new year. Thankfully though, the Mars retrograde will um, be in aspect to Saturn, kind of similar to the energy that we had in um, May, June of 2021. We saw the eclipses were kind of wild, the retrogrades were wild, but um, we still had, you know, Mercury and the sun um, that were in aspect to uh, Saturn and Jupiter. So I guess that's kind of the silver lining next year. So thank you guys for listening to this, uh, getting more insight into just some thoughts that I had when I was thinking about this transit and what that is going to manifest and bring. I'm um, gonna talk a little bit about how it's gonna affect each and every one of the 12 signs. So let's do that. Listen for your sun, moon, and rising. Um, really quick, I do wanna just read to you guys though the Sabian symbol um, for the conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune because the conjunction that's going to happen will be at 23 degrees. Let me pull this up so you guys can see when. And I think that's 
you know, it's gonna, it's actually gonna um, happen only one time, I believe, because it'll retrograde to 28 degrees. So that conjunction will be a big one. And you'll feel it when it when it's within a few degrees. So you're really gonna feel it March and in, in going into April. Um, but the day that it conjuncts, so it's conjunct by the degree as of April 8th, but it looks like it's gonna be exact on April 12th, 2022, just a heads up. Venus will be in Pisces too, so that's not bad. We've gotten all out of the, the Saturn stuff. All right, so um, for 23 degrees, I'm gonna read 23 and 24, but as you guys know who watch my channel, I love reading from this book, The Sabian Symbols, um, because sometimes it'll manifest literally in real life, and I was reading 23 and 24, and I was like, we definitely have to read both. <laughs> so um, 23 degrees of Pisces, Spirit phenomena, sensitivity, strange things happening. The symbol speaks to the materialization of higher reality, the ability of a man to tap into potential that he can make and manifest according to his particular will and desire. The image is of spirit phenomenon emphasizing the power of the mind and the importance of focus and mental discipline. The challenge is the degree of learning how to break through the conditioning effects of experience and developed greater sensitivity to the possibilities of what yet can be achieved. The key is not allowing the self to become distracted by the allure of every passing whim and fancy, trivial problem of everyday living. On a practical level, this image alludes to psychic phenomenon and oftentimes entertaining activities of the invisible world. It also suggests cosmic comedies, practical jokes, gremlins, or the mysterious causes of things that inexplicably go wrong, disappear, or change in some way. Positive at its highest, the symbol speaks to psychic sensitivity, highly refined attunement to the higher potential of all things, a powerful depth and focus that leads to significant achievements. Negative, it can be confusion, confusion, nervousness, inability, or a tendency to easily distract. The accent is on strange events that disrupt business as usual. Things go wrong or turn out unexpectedly today. Your greatest advantage lies in understanding the greater significance being revealed when things don't go as planned or when patterns and habits suddenly are broken. Be sensitive to opportunities created by changing confusion. Guard against creating your own chaos by refusing to discipline yourself or establish order. Avoid trying to be everywhere at once in a fanatic attempt to not miss everything that's going on. Learn to sit still and listen. Stepping stones, telekinesis, uh, psychic phenomenon, confusion, practical jokes, arbitration, quirks, unexplained happenings. Very Jupiter and Neptune. Jupiter is comedy too, right? So, you know, it's funny, things that are funny. It's like spirit interacting and like teaching us things in like funny ways. Okay, so Pisces 24, um, an inhibited island, cultivation. The theme is adapti adaptivity. The symbol speaks to self-containment, self-sufficiency, having everything needed to function independently, ready and available at hand. It also speaks to skill in organizing resources for their maximum and most profitable use. The image is of an inhabited island, emphasizes um, and stresses the importance of thoroughly analyzing potential usefulness, usefulness and everything can be found at hand in any situation of need. In practical terms, this degree is about learning how to adapt and look at things in new and different ways. Being willing to make do. Um, positive at its highest, it represents um, being inventive, creative, and the ability to find clever or novel ways to get the job done. Don't be selfish, self-indulgent, or egocentric. Do not isolate. The, action, the accent is on self-sufficiency, and um, it's a do-it-yourself day. The greatest advantage lies in um, creating what you need from what you already have, getting rid of presumptions, guarding against being too independent, or telling yourself that you don't need help from anyone. Avoid cutting yourself off from those um, who, won't let it ha who won't let you have it your own way. Learn to cooperate. Development, civilization, culture, resourcefulness, organization, refinement, self-sufficiency. I mean, it's interesting that you see 23 talks a lot about things are going wrong. Why is it going wrong? Things are missing. Things aren't working. <laughs> Why is it not working? Spirit's intervening. Um, and then all of a sudden it moves to 24 and it's like, okay, well, we adapt. You know, things go missing. You know, schedules fall apart. 
um, we, we, we lose belief in something to gain belief in something else. So something very magical about that 23 and 24, in my opinion. It's so funny. It's like, I think of, you know, Jupiter just went into my, well, it's going into my um, whole sign six house of pets and got this puppy and we keep calling him a gremlin. <laughs> so I was reading that and I'm like, he literally is a gremlin. Um, but it, it, you may find, and I have found that this has happened a lot with my Neptune transits the last couple of years. I'm going to sound crazy even saying this. Things get misplaced. And I'm not talking about like socks and stuff. Like I have noticed that I'll put something somewhere and I know I put it somewhere and I come back and it's been moved. Or um, sometimes little trinkets or little things will show up literally in my day-to-day -day life. That's like signs or omens. Um, so I feel like there's going to be a lot more of that happening, especially if you're somebody who's already aware of that. You may find that there's just little things popping up in your day to day. That's not just seeing, you know, 1111 or seeing things on license plates. I'm talking about, you know, maybe, um, you know, pennies that show up and like, that's your sign from like your deceased relative or things that are more of the spiritual realm and that the spiritual realm is more interacting with us and intervening or trying to teach us something to show us it's okay that this is falling apart. We got to let this go. Like focus on what you believe on. Belief is going to be everything next year. All right, so let's get into how it's gonna affect all of the 12 signs. Thank you guys for being patient, listening to my ramble, <laughs> all my rambles. Um, so listen for your sun, moon, and rising. Obviously, if you don't know what that is, then please do take a look at a um, calendar or excuse me, a calculator online. You can go to astro.com and you can do that for free. If you wanna learn more about your chart, consider booking a session with me. All right, so for Aries and Aries rising, you have got Jupiter moving into your 12th house. And um, this is really gonna put an emphasis on just having Jupiter there uh, because Jupiter rules your ninth house of philosophy, travel, um, beliefs, um, especially foreign travel. This may be a theme for like Aries placement. And um, it's a merger of your ninth house Lord and your 12th house Lord. So great for um, Aries or Aries rising who want to take a program. Let's say you want to apply for a program, finish and go back and get your master's. Uh, maybe you want to um, start teaching. Maybe you want to um, start learning more about an ancient or a mystical practice. Maybe you want to learn more about tarot or astrology. Great year for that. You may be in either the learning phase, applying to a program, or you may be teaching yourself. That's very possible. Jupiter being conjunct Neptune in her 12th house makes me feel like this is going to be a year where it's definitely about the invisible world and what you're manifesting, what you're dreaming, um, what you're feeling like. You may feel a little bit more isolated. There may be a sense of you needing a little bit more downtime, a little bit more rest, um, but it will be well worth it when Jupiter then ingresses into your sign in the spring going into the summer of 2022 because you're gonna hit the ground running. So you kind of need your, your rest, you need your recuperation, you need your connection with your higher self. Um, there's gonna be a lot of business that you're doing possibly behind the scenes or um, traveling and working in a foreign place or something like that before it moves into your sign, okay? Now, when these two come together, um, yeah, I know you're a fire sign, but your dreams may be especially, especially visual and very strong. Um, you may experience miracles as a, response, as a result of this transit. And it can have you doing some kind of like distance learning or maybe learning by screen in some way. That's something else that can kind of pan out for you as well. So any of these things can apply. Obviously this is general, just based off of your rising sign. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> sometimes the tarot is so sassy, huh? Um, the Hanged Man, which is literally the card of Pisces. It is the card of Neptune. It does talk about holding and waiting, um, being in suspension, feeling like you're caught, needing to make a decision, needing to take time to reflect before you make a choice. 
um, a sacrifice that you might make in some way. It's like, well, maybe I can't be going on my luxury vacations because I really do need to go back to school and get my degree. Um, it may be that you decide that you wanna learn more about the legal process of starting a nonprofit. And you're like, well, I gotta invest time or energy into that. It can be about yoga. This is a card that is seen um, and it's very much connected to um, that suspension of being between two worlds, being half in and half out, and the connection that you have with your higher self and taking that um, uh, initiative to put yourself in a position of really tuning into the spiritual energies within the body. So you may be finding out more about this. You might be um, learning more about secret or magical traditions as well. So if you're somebody who is wanting to go deeper into this, somebody may appear that introduces you to it, kind of gets you into it. They're not quite the Hierophant, right? They're not quite um, um, the, um, the, the magician. This is something that happens, or maybe an experience that happens that makes you go, whoa, there's way more going on than what meets the eye. And you start kind of questioning everything and you start seeing things from a different perspective. So I love this card coming up for you. Definitely consider meditation, yoga, something like that to help integrate more of this transit because it's gonna be very, very spiritual. For Taurus and Taurus rising, so we've got Jupiter that has moved into your 11th house, which deals with your goals, your friends, your networks. It's in Pisces. So that's really cool because that tells me that you're gonna start making new friends. You're gonna start making connections with new people. And these people may have a very different cultural background, a very different religious background. They may be very spiritual, kind of out there from different places. Um, and you may learn a lot through some of these networks or friends that you're kind of connecting with. Now, Jupiter rules traditionally your eighth house as well as your 11th house. So there's this merger of the eighth house of psychological stuff, stuff that relates perhaps even to your partner. So you can be meeting new people through your partner, um, finding new ways of making money or resources through friends. Maybe you're working with friends. Maybe you're filming things for friends. Maybe you're editing things for friends. Maybe you're traveling with friends and you have friends that are willing to say, hey, come with us, come join us. We're going and we're taking this course. We're gonna go to this country. Um, and we're gonna make a trip out of it. Come with us. Oh, by the way, we'll pay for it. <laughs> right? Jupiter rules your eighth. So you're going to find very generous groups of people who want to work with you, who want to hear what you have to say, who may want to invest in your visions or your dreams. Equally, uh, because the eighth house represents your partner's money, your partner may make some money this year. So if you have a business partner or a romantic partner, they may see a real increase um, just through their friends and people who they're doing business with. So your partner may be able to network for you. Um, if you're somebody who's even self-employed or maybe you're a cinematographer, um, your partner might say, oh, I have somebody who needs you know, help filming this thing. Can you help them do it? I'll connect you, right? So that's a really great energy for you to have. The 11th house is gonna make you aware of your goals too. So you may find that because you're an earth sign, there's this interesting energy between Uranus on your Ascendant and Jupiter and Neptune in your 11th where um, through this connection of other people, your values start changing, you start realizing you can be more authentic, you can be more yourself, and you're aligning yourself with people who want to kind of um, help you come more into that version of you and they accept you for who you are. Ten of Cups, great card. Um, it's the happy ever ending, you know, card. This is the card that talks about getting everything that you want, feeling the emotional fulfillment. Interesting, Taurus, this is a water card. This is not an earth card. So this is not about money. This will be a year that you will feel rich with connections, rich with um, an inheritance, rich with family, rich with, um, you know, coming together with other people and realizing that some of the most valuable things you can't actually put a price tag on, which I think is gonna be kind of startling for a lot of Tauruses because they're gonna be like, oh my God, I've never felt like this before. What's happening? What's going on? Um, it's too good to be true type energy. But this is a card that is about a completion. So tens are always about kind of something coming full circle. So if you're somebody who's done a lot of output, right? Helping other people, giving your time to others, bankrolling things, it's almost like that comes full circle and it'll come back to you and you can be very emotionally moved because you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought that um, somebody would want to help me or that somebody would want to um, partner with me or assist me in some way. So very emotionally fulfilling for you, Taurus. 
for Gemini and Gemini rising, um, this is Jupiter moving into your 10th house, which is wonderful for your career and your spotlight. So, you know, definitely a year where you're going to see big career changes. You're going to be on top. There's going to be more exposure happening for you. Okay. And you have to kind of mind how the transits go in this next year because Jupiter and Neptune coming together can definitely be this divine connection that you have, right? where it's like you find your dream job, your dream position. Um, maybe you find that, you know, there is a way for you to launch a business, but also give back in some way. If you are somebody involved in film um, or somebody who is involved in movies, actors, actresses, photography, spirituality, nonprofit, even the medical field, hospital field, things like that, there's gonna be a lot of success because Jupiter is gonna come into conjunction with that. However, Jupiter rules natally your seventh and your 10th house. So having Jupiter go into your 10th house is like extra good. Um, the seventh house Lord moving in, some, some Geminis will start a business with a partner this year, whether it's their romantic marital partner, um, whether it is um, a business partner they take on. If you're somebody who represents clients, you may have a very high-end client who comes in or a very famous person who comes in who then in turn kind of bumps your career up in a very positive way. I get the impression that there can also be a sense of with your seventh and your 10th house energies coming together, some Geminis may actually make a decision to change their title this year. So it's like, I was an employee, now I own my own business. Or, um, you know, now I'm the boss or now I'm married. So there can be some status changes also that are happening because Jupiter is your seventh house Lord. So a partner can approach you this year and go, Hey, what if we, you know, worked together? What if we built something together? And I would say, stay open to that, you know, stay open to that. You have a lot of great ideas. It's definitely been a huge building period that's been going on for you recently, but the North node is now moving into your 12th house, which is saying that working behind the scenes in a private space, having an office, working with even studios or bigger businesses or companies are very likely. Um, so it, there is going to be um, a sense of you getting recognition, but it may be because of somebody else. So you may own the company, but somebody else may be the CEO. You may have a business, but your partner may run everything and be the face of it. So don't get lost in whether or not you're getting enough um, appreciation out there is one thing I would say for you. Okay, you're going you're gonna to have it pretty good. All right, so let's see what the cards have to say. The death card. This is not a bad card. Um, this is talking a lot about the, the transition, right? I think about like the south node is moving through Scorpio. So it's actually going through your sixth house. So maybe you give up one office space for another. Maybe you um, go through a change or a transformation and a rebalancing of energies. This is saying something's gonna die off for something new to happen. I know a lot of Geminis and Sagas have really been going through these changes in this last year with the eclipses. But there's one thing I know, if you're a Gemini who's gotten rid of partners that weren't working, maybe you left marriages, business partnerships, whatever. It's kind of like going back to the drawing board and being really just willing to start over. This is a card that's also dealing with Pluto, okay? And so, you know, I think about Pluto being an aspect um, to this for you. I think about, you know, Pluto being in your eighth house and it's really talking a lot about wealth and wealth building and investments and loans. And you may be dealing with a sense of like rebalancing money with other people or needing to get investments or needing to take out loans or handling debts in order for you to get ahead. So there's more of an emphasis on saving that's coming up or making larger sums of money. And I would say, don't be afraid of this. This is a big theme right now, Venus going retrograde and Capricorn um, that's getting all of your resources and finances reorganized so that way you can actually bring in more. So don't fear the change, don't resist the change, lean into it and know that it can actually be very good. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, so we've got Jupiter in your ninth house, um, expanding the opportunities to publish, to teach, to travel, um, giving you the opportunity to also like film and things relating to documentaries or teaching things um, and maybe traveling to foreign countries, maybe traveling by sea. That's something else that I could see happening for you. Um, I think about you also being able to have the opportunity to see this merger of your sixth and your ninth house Lord. So you may be somebody who needs to learn more about um, organizing your schedule pertaining to travel. You may be somebody who learns a new task or 
Um, you have some new skills that you're applying to your work this year. Um, the sixth house can also deal with um, people that you hire that help you. So it's like you may need an assistant this year to get everything done. You may need a dog walker. You may need a, um, a housekeeper. There may be something like that that kind of helps you balance out your sixth house so you can do more of the ninth house things that you want to do, right? Which could be teaching, traveling, what have you. Um, this is a beautiful aspect for you, Cancer, because it is in a sister sign. So you're going to see trines that are happening, and the trines are happening actually from your ninth house to your ascendant or your sun. And we've also got the south node, which is in Scorpio. So the south node is in your fifth house. So lots of creative energy that's coming through for you. I get the impression that it's going to give you the opportunity to pivot a little bit and learn how to work with other people. And it may not always be about your personal projects, but it, it will bring you the creative satisfaction that you're looking for. I think about the South Node in your fifth and I wonder like, are you needing to feel more inspired? Do you need help with your children? Do you need people to help you take care of your kids so you can travel and work and do more? That may be a theme that comes up for you as well. If you are a Cancer who is in the midst of some legal situations, um, maybe perhaps you're dealing with a lawsuit, maybe you're waiting for something to be published, maybe you're waiting to get accepted into a program, holy cow, these are really good transits for you. And I think that you're gonna find it can manifest as like a dream trip, right? I have like a lot of like Cancer Risings who are planning really significant trips next year to go and be by water, or they want to go and see all of these famous art museums, or maybe they want to go and see um, this really, you know, famous church. These are the kinds of things that may start kind of panning out for you. Justice. So this is cool um, because it's actually telling me that I think when Venus moves into Pisces, you're going to see some of the most amazing karmic situations happen, right? I can't help but think of like Venus and Neptune and Jupiter coming together also in your ninth. And I'm wondering, is there a love at a distance? Is there a long distance romance? Is there a love affair? Is there a ceremony? Is there a glorious wedding? Um, is there something like that that happens as a result of this transit? Very possible. Um, justice is also about rebalancing the scale. So it's kind of suggesting that it's about organizing everything a little bit better emotionally, maybe making more room for partnership, making more room for romantic relationships. Some cancers may be coming out of this situation of the Venus retrograde at the end of 2022, 2021, realizing like, you know what? I really do want to get married. Maybe you got engaged. Maybe you're planning a wedding. On the flip side, those of you guys who did not fare well through the Venus retrograde are going to be like, I need an attorney. I need to be able to make sure that like this is handled. I need to get a divorce, you'll have the support. There's going to be fairness. You're going to have fairness in partnerships. So if you do decide to part, it may be amicable or on the flip side, you may be somebody who ends up coming out of it and getting like a, like a settlement or you may end up getting spousal support. You may end up getting like a, an actual legal settlement that can happen. So um, not necessarily a bad card. It looks like fairness and balance, justice is going to be on your side. For Leo and Leo rising, so this is Jupiter in your eighth house. Holy cow, Jupiter in the eighth house, um, it can go one of two ways. So on one hand, it can be like this excess of money coming in, right? It can be, um, remember Jupiter magnifies, so it can be more money, more problems. You make more money, you pay more in taxes. Um, you charge more money, you take out more loans, you pay higher interest. There's higher money that you need to pay back. So just be mindful of how that energy works with the eighth house because there's always an exchange there. Now the eighth house is very emotional, very transformational. It can be about losing yourself, merging. It can also represent psychological triggers or traumas. I would say pay close attention here, Leos. Th this can be a time where you really benefit from um, being mindful of whatever energetically or literally you're putting in your body, whether this is, um, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. <laughs> These are things that we see when Jupiter goes into the eighth house. There can be an excessiveness. Um, but on the flip side, there can also be like benefactors that come into your life where, you know, maybe you meet somebody who is just the right person to help you 
um, you know, uh, take a new position and they're willing to give you the salary that you want, right? So I think about like the sextile that's going on between your eighth house and Uranus in your 10th house, where you can get a very lucrative position offered to you out of the blue. It can pay very well. It can give you all kinds of great benefits and insurance and stock options and like be super killer. And you have the opportunity to make a serious fat amount of cash. I, I feel like that's very possible. I have seen lots of um, female clients when they go through this transit where it's just really great for um, meeting wealthy guys. Guys who have money, um, really great, really active sex life, lots of indulging in um, sex and sexuality. Um, but you wanna pay attention and make sure that it's not overdoing it. Um, certainly you will benefit from detoxes and purging and all of the other eighth house things that kind of come up. So the psychological, relationship that you have with sex you'll kind of look at a little bit more how that's affecting you um, and also the exchanges that you have with other people can get particularly sweet some leos may get a very nice uh, tax return actually in this next year um, or they may be somebody who just gets very lavish gifts or just kind of like a increase in their pay is kind of the vibe that i'm getting now for you, because Jupiter rules not only your eighth house, but your fifth house, that's why I think it's gonna be more about sex. There can be an overindulgence in sex, especially when Jupiter and Neptune and Venus are coming together. There can be a few Leos who you know, have a bottle of wine and then find out a month later that they're pregnant. So you wanna be mindful that there can be this overindulgence in um, anything related to sex or alcohol. I think the fifth house is interesting also because it's very romantic and you're going to start realizing that um, love is more than just this um, feeling. There has to be an actual energy exchange and it's going to psychologically either affect you or your partner when it starts talking about vulnerability and, and staying open with each other. The emperor. Interesting that this is a card that deals more with Aries or with Mars energy. Now for some female Leos, this can be about finally having a real significant union with a man um, or dealing with um, husbands, bosses, fathers, is, is significant male figures, Jupiter, right? That's what Jupiter is. Um, and it's more positive and optimistic than it is Saturn. So I feel like it can be somebody who really shows up in a big way for you, who makes you feel supported. On the flip side, Jupiter going through the eighth house can also be an indication that sometimes there is like an inheritance or somebody passes and you gain something from it, especially Jupiter going into the eighth. So be mindful that when it comes to like fathers, grandfathers, you know, older relatives, male relatives, that can be a theme that comes up for you in this next year. Okay. All right. So for, for Virgo and Virgo rising, I've said this in my previous video. I'm going to say it again. Um, your horoscope for the next year is quite awesome. Um, having your fourth house, Lord Jupiter move into your seventh house of marriage and partnerships and conjuncting Neptune. Um, it's going to be an interesting little bit of a do, -si -do. So Jupiter and Neptune is like a relationship that's too good to be true, right? In your seventh house. And it can be somebody who is um, very Piscean. They can be um, very creative. They make music, they make art. Um, maybe they're photographers or they, they're into like dance and design. Maybe it's a foreigner that you meet who's from another country or they have a really interesting um, background and kind of heritage and they may live in another place or they're trying to move from one country to another. They may have a real emphasis um, also on Neptunian things like boating, fishing, uh, swimming, anything um, being by the water, being by the ocean. So um, they may have um, immigrated from a place like that, or they may be talking about trying to move somewhere like that. Maybe they have family in some way that they live with from another country. So that's something I would look for. Um, but yeah, basically for you, you, you've got your fourth and your seventh house Lord coming together. Now for Virgo, this is big because it's happening in an angular house. Similar to Gemini, this is gonna affect you in a big way where it's not just gonna be your seventh house, it's gonna affect also your, um, your third and your fourth house. I could see a lot of Virgos who are having to learn new languages um, or perhaps maybe um, focusing more on far distance travel. So you might be spending less money on cars, more money on plane tickets next year. 
Um, maybe if you take a um, trip far away, you end up meeting somebody who lives in a different place. Maybe if you go to school um, in a new program somewhere else, you meet somebody new. So regardless any which way I cut it, I mean, these two coming together, the higher octave of the Jupiter Neptune can be like, whoa, this is, this is the person I've been waiting for. This is it. It's very like Disney romance kind of scene. On the flip side, the Jupiter Neptune can be somebody who indulges too much in alcohol, too much in drugs. Uh, maybe they are super Piscean. They're not very grounded. Um, they're kind of in, they're kind of out, but you will see some theme of having to learn how to be more emotionally available for a partnership. So if, if you're liking what's going on with the Venus retrograde in your fifth, where you're cleaning out the heart space, you're getting ready for dating, you're starting to talk more about love, romance, children, even marriage, all of that is being aspected between your fifth and your seventh house all next year. Commitments can get significant. Um, I wonder though, if there's gonna be a situation that happens at the second part of the year where you're talking about moving for somebody or somebody moving for you um, and possibly relocating somewhere completely differently and how that affects your job, right? Cause you're gonna have a Mars retrograde in your 10th house Virgo. So there's gonna be some sense of like, well, who moves for who and how do we handle money? And you're here and I'm there and I've been working on my career. Like, can I move? Um, so it'll be that. It may also be whether or not you're actually willing to have a status change, if you're willing to be married, if you're willing to partner with another person. The tower, yikes. <laughs> um, to me, this is the Mars energy that I was talking about, that the, the more challenging energies are gonna come the second half of the year, where it's like, well, do I wanna be a parent? I don't know, do I wanna be somebody's wife? I mean, you may be a little bit all over the place with that because of the squares to Neptune. This is what I think. I think that if you are a Virgo or a Virgo rising who's already kind of gone through the conflict where you've had the issues with the mutable squares and also the eclipses and you've cleared that out, you know that that energy is present so you can avoid it, right? So this can actually talk about like the clearing has already happened, the uh, epiphany has already happened, the crisis has already happened to make you more so aware of what it is you do need to do, right? Whether it's being more assertive and aware that you can have these kind of Neptunian energies in your life or kind of going, oh my gosh, I've been floating off in the distance. Like, you know, now I'm X amount of year, years old. I wanna be married or I, I, wanna, I wanna partner with someone or I wanna have a kid. So that, that's gonna happen. Um, what I like about the tower is it's saying that certain events will um, transpire to get you on the path. So it's to kind of get you to the next phase. So um, there can be a dissolving of certain relationships that weren't quote unquote meant to be. So just be mindful of that. All right, so for Virgo, excuse me, for Libra and Libra rising, you've got Jupiter going into your sixth house, which deals with office, coworkers, pets, health. Um, you've got Neptune that is there. You know, Jupiter rules your sixth house. It also rules your third house of communications. So you've got this merger of your third and your sixth house Lord in your sixth. New languages, I can see, learning new languages. Um, finding like a office space or a schedule or just a daily routine that's more in flow and it feels good. Like I'm, I'm Libra rising, so I keep thinking about like, I want my routine to feel like it's, I'm in a state of meditation, not like I'm running around having to like do everything. Um, so I think it's gonna be a process of working on that through the spring for you guys. Definitely positive to see Jupiter and Neptune come together in your sixth house, which is usually about accidents and health problems and all kinds of inconveniences, right? So to have Jupiter and Neptune there, it's like realizing that uh, mental health does lead to better physical health and vice versa. And that there can be some sense of becoming more aware of um, bad habits, health habits, um, you know, self undoing <laughs> where you've had a tendency to self sabotage or not be checked in. Um, so you, more than most signs, do benefit from really paying attention to your habits and your routine, especially the first couple months. If you want to make a change in your health or your routine or your diet, um, you may opt to do so. I think like a lot of you guys may um, opt to um, integrate more like shakes and like liquid supplements into your diet. You may um, actually see increased health because of pets. You may find that um, you're meditating more or you're taking more time in your daily routine to uh, feel inspired or to be creative. Meditation can be helpful. Swimming can be helpful. All of that stuff. 
On the flip side, if you're eating, drinking, or partying too much, you're gonna really start to see the effects of it. And you can see how it actually can negatively impact your routine. Now it's going to sextile Pluto in your fourth. So it's about kind of getting your home and your emotions under control. And it's also making aspects to Uranus in your eighth, which is going to be psychological triggers. Um, the way that I've combated it and what I would recommend is like needing to get organized first rather than trying to make all the changes at one time. It's going to take a couple months to do that. So getting organized, getting clear, acknowledging emotions before you actually make changes to your routine is the key. So let's see. Um, also, you guys might spend more time either teaching or studying next year. That's something else that I would see that may happen. And um, you're going to find some kind of work that you really connect to deeply on a spiritual level that you feel like um, is some kind of give back aspect, you know, wanting to help people, wanting to feed people, wanting to teach people. So there may be something that you can do that's going to be um, almost like um, opportunities for like nonprofit uh, that'll come up in this next year as well. Death again. Um, interesting, Libra, that this is bringing up you know, your second house and you're like, but how do I make money doing that? Like, what about the money? Okay. Uranus is in your eighth house. So I wouldn't worry so much about that. It's more about how you're showing up and being authentic and letting go of an old way of being. This is also about your psychological reactions to things, um, detoxing, purging, stuff like that, where something is becoming a habit. It's wanting you to be aware of this. Um, thankfully the South node is in Scorpio. So, you know, on one hand I could see dietary changes, food changes are really positive going through your second house. But on the flip side, um, it's also kind of saying, well, it might be costly or there may be a sense of to have improved health. We scale back on things, scale back on what we're eating, scale back on spending, scale back on working and the actual impact that it has on you financially and how it's creating incentive for you to focus more on your health and your routine. So you can really go the distance. Okay. So don't fight the inevitable. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, you've got Jupiter going into your fifth house, which rules children, romance, creativity, um, passion. You are going to love having Jupiter in this part of your chart. Um, obviously, it's a sister sign, so it's going to kind of bode well for you. It's going to make you feel like you have a sense of um, creative expression that's coming out that's just easier. It's going to be better. Um, the fifth house is about, you know, the ego and how we um, create and what we create visually, right? Because Pisces, Neptune, Pisces. Um, I feel like Scorpios who are in the field of being self-employed, working with screens, working with music, working with art are going to be um, doing very well with this transit. Um, Jupiter in your chart is the ruler of both the second and the fifth house. So making more money or more expenses relating to job or relating to children. If you are a Scorpio who's looking to get pregnant, be careful. Jupiter in your fifth house can make that happen, especially when the sun, Venus, Jupiter um, come together. So watch for that. When Mars goes through Pisces, definitely a very fertile time. It's going to be great for those of you guys who are wanting to get back into dating. So if you have felt like there's been a bit of a dry spell, you might meet somebody and fall head over heels in love this year. And usually that happens when Jupiter is in your fifth house. There is something that you fall in love with. Um, but it can be a hobby. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be a dog. It can be a baby. Um, but being that it's in a feminine sign and it's very receptive um, and it's going to be making aspects to your sun, moon, or rising, it does increase the odds and the likelihood that there is going to be a pregnancy. Now, be mindful that this is also sextiling Uranus in your seventh house. So there is this energy of, oh, I fall in love, I get married. Oh, I'm pregnant, we're getting married. Oh, we're, we're married, now we're pregnant. So those energies are gonna work with each other quite a bit all year round. Um, second house is great, in increased money. So if you're, somebody who, <laughs> if you're somebody who likes to gamble, if you're somebody who likes to bet, if you're somebody who works with the markets or anything like that, because that's all speculative, fifth house. Um, you may make more money, but there can also be increased costs because Jupiter rules your second house because of children. But likely it's a sacrifice you're willing to make. Um, or if it's a hobby, it's a sacrifice you're willing to make. Or if you're launching a business, you'll invest money into it because you know that it's going to make you happy. Just watch for overindulgence, over partying, things like that can happen with Jupiter being in your fifth house. No shit. <laughs> 
So um, this has come up for several people. Don't fear the change. I'm gonna pull another card because I, I don't know, I'll just still. Um, this is your card, Scorpio. So this is definitely talking about changes and transformations. But I think what's interesting is that this is representing yourself. You are the one who is fearing change. You're afraid of happiness. You're afraid of vulnerability. You're afraid of being in love. You're afraid of having a kid, whatever. Um, there's something coming up where it's like there's this fear. Keep in mind that Pluto is in Capricorn. So a huge piece of the puzzle is how you're communicating and expressing or how you're talking about that. And even just talking about things can come across like you're shut down and you're fearful just because of how you're communicating. So it's kind of saying like, work with that. The bottom card was the um, Eight of Swords. So it is feeling like limitation or there is some aspect of feeling stuck and not, know how, not knowing how to move forward. Scorpios and Scorpio Risings are working a lot of this out right now. This is happening in the midst of the uh, Venus retrograde. You're gonna have a Mercury retrograde too that's gonna be happening. So it's about getting all of those fears out. And if you're feeling very restless, let this energy settle in a little bit more in the spring. Um, and when everything starts to move into Pisces, you're gonna feel more dreamy, creative, kind of romantic, and you're gonna go with the flow a little bit better than you are right now. So just give it some time. For Sag and Sag rising, you've got your uh, ruling planet Jupiter going into your fourth house. It rules your first house, it rules your fourth house. So a lot of Sages are like, I'm looking for my home. I'm looking for my family. Whether this is the family you create, the house that you buy, the new city that you move to because it feels like home. Um, this is gonna be a theme that's coming up for a lot of Sagittariuses. You know, I feel like um, it's about also your emotions relating to yourself and your body. You know, the, the first house has a very kind of Aries feel and the fourth house is very Cancerian. So it's like, I move into a new house, but I'm still single. You know, I moved to this new city, but my family's not here. A little sweet and salty. Um, it's definitely going to give you the opportunity, I think, to reflect on um, being more um, open. I mean, you're super wanderlust, but being willing to take chances and venture into the unknown. Don't be afraid to move away from home. Don't be afraid to move into your own space. Watch what happens when all of these planets are in Pisces. You might find the dream home. It might be in another country. It might be across you know, the city. It may be a place that has pools or close to lakes or bodies of water. It, it, we want to get you guys into a period next year where your home feels very zen. So there's a lot more spirituality going on in the home. Maybe you have the place feng shui. Maybe you're having an altar space in your home. It's very much making it your own. Now, Jupiter in the fourth does expand home and family. So certain family members may get married. There may be kids that come in. You may have an addition to your home. So if you already have a place, you might be looking for another or you're expanding your family literally. Um, or, you know, there, there can just be new people who are coming into the home in general. I feel like for Sag and Sag rising, there is this sense of them really um, changing the way that they look at family. And that family may not have to be actual literal family members. It can be friends and people who come into the home and people who you share space with. It's also a great time to look at your family lineage and your legacy, where you come from and your roots. And you may be traveling to places where your ancestors are from in some particular way. Definitely more emotional for you this year though. And there's a lot of reflecting on things emotionally um, and learning to let things go, especially when we're seeing the South Node going into your 12th house. There can be a lot of trauma healing, releasing that stuff, letting go of past life things um, that can really kind of help you um, open up more. Nine of coins, so certainly having the cash to do it, um, treating yourself well, maybe decorating your home, making it feel very comfortable, adding nice things, luxurious things, um, really giving to yourself, not just because you can afford it, but because it's a way of you showing, you know, maybe my body is my temple, so I'm investing more in my body and I'm also investing more in my home because I wanna feel comfortable. Something like that can be going on. But this is a woman who's capable of doing things on her own herself. So um, for some people, it can also be, you know what, I wanna have kids, so I'm gonna adopt, I'm gonna do it myself. Um, I want to you know, buy my own home, but I'm gonna do it without a partner type vibes. Um, if you are a single mother or a single parent, it can also be that um, you're doing it, but you enjoy doing it. There's something about having your own space and taking the initiative that makes you feel good. 
So that's awesome for you, Sag. So we got Capricorn. This is Jupiter now in your third house, which deals with communication, contracts, your day-to-day, -day, uh, siblings, cars, gadgets, and it's meeting with Neptune there. So one thing I would say is that for Capricorn and Cap Rising, it's definitely a great year to like get a new phone, get a new laptop, get a new computer, um, anything that's gonna have improved um, screens, graphics, anything of that nature. I also feel like it can be about improved communication with certain family members or um, neighbors also as well. So that's something else that can come up. Perhaps maybe you get a new car, maybe there's more road trips, um, maybe there's more journaling, writing, um, communicating, learning more about self-help and self-awareness. That's something else that I think that might happen with Neptune. Especially because Jupiter rules um, your 12th house that some of you guys may be picking up books on you know, healing psychological traumas or learning about past lives or learning how to read tarot. Definitely Jupiter and Neptune in the third, such a great transit to learn how to read tarot cards um, or learning more about um, automatic writing or just getting more into the habit of journaling. So if you're somebody who's like a screenplay writer or you're trying to sell a script or you're trying to write a TV show, great year if you've got some of these aspects because you might find that something significant significantly gets picked up and there's this stream of consciousness that's happening as you're writing. Learning a new language can be great too, especially if you're planning on doing some traveling. Anything pertaining to documents or paperwork and travel should also go well. So if you're somebody who's trying to um, get legal documents processed for visas or um, anything like that, it should go positively. Ace of Cups. Speaking more sweetly, right? Just communicating and, and loving life and being super kind to other people. I love the sextiles to your ascendant. I feel like whatever transits Capricorns are going through December, January is extremely humbling. You may write about it. You may share your ideas. Great time to talk about that process. I think of like Jupiter and Neptune is like, getting more into like vo voice work or vocalizing or singing or um, starting a podcast, right? So um, talking about what you love and what you're passionate about and focusing more on positivity. Um, sweeter relationships in general, especially with third house people, siblings, family members, stuff like that. Um, neighbors, there can be some romantic connection even with a neighbor or somebody who's traveling or somebody who's visiting. So very nice for you. We've got Aquarius, um, Jupiter's in your second house of money, resources, self-esteem, great transit for money coming in. Um, Jupiter in the second house will definitely pad your wallet a little bit, uh, put some more money in your bank account. At the same time, it increases your appetite, so you may be more hungry. Um, you may also find that you're indulging more on um, foods, fatty foods, alcohol, um, buying more luxurious gifts. You know, Neptune rules your second house, so it can be like money comes in and then money vanishes, and you're like, where did all my paycheck go? So you want to watch for that. Now, thankfully, it's going to be making sextiles to Pluto in your 12th house, so I feel like some Aquarius and Aquarius rising are like boss, like super boss, have been working on things for a while, waiting to roll out some of these projects or these business ideas. Maybe you're a big business person or a CEO behind the scenes and all the hard work you've been doing in this last year is really gonna start materializing and showing up, especially if you work in the arts or film or music. Um, if you're in production work, if you are in food um, and, and innovations in food or you're investing in land, buying land to grow food, that could be something else that could materialize for you as well. Um, you know, Neptune rules in your chart, obviously the second house, but Jupiter rules the 11th. So some of you guys may start businesses with friends. You may make more money with friends. You've started some kind of group or a collective. Um, which may materialize and like all of your financial goals are starting to come together. Watch for missing money though. There can be holes in your budget, things that slip by that you don't see, money that's missing or stolen or taken in some way. I can't tell you how many people I've seen with Jupiter and Neptune aspects in their second that lose a wallet, that they notice that there's an error in a budget and there's thousands of dollars missing or some kind of scam that happens and they have um, some kind of like, you know, tax issues. So 
be mindful of that as well. Um, but all in all, I think especially when Jupiter and Venus come together, that's going to be particularly sweet for you. And it may materialize as you actually making quite a beautiful purchase when it comes to real estate. That's the kind of the feeling that I'm getting. So watch for that, Aquarius. Ooh, the Empress. <laughs> Fertility. Um, so family, right? Family, stuff relating to mothers, stuff relating to women in the family. Um, this can be about pregnancy. I mean, I guess that's another way to look at it, especially with the Saturn Uranus square. So the body changing, the home needs to change, um, but something relating to um, mothers or women in the family or um, just resources within the family, the mother side of the family, there can be more of an emphasis also in um, you know, having support from women, especially when Venus shows up. Um, this can also just be about nurturing. This is a card that relates to nurturing or caring for something. Beauty, cosmetics, that may be something that you get involved in or you're invested in in some way. Or the arts, because this card is shown with the symbol of Venus. So this is also about business, but more, less in the mercurial business way, more in the Venusian, the money, the exchange type of way. So this looks very positive for you. Pay attention to resources coming from family though in some way. I think there's a connection here. And last but not least, we got Pisces, who's really the star of the show because, well, Jupiter and Neptune are in your sign, in your first house. And I have to tell you, I'm already starting to see the glimmers of some of these clients who are Pisces rising with Jupiter and Neptune on their ascendant. Very intuitive, very checked in, very sensitive, very emotional. Um, but there's a lot that's going on relating to their physical body because, well, Jupiter rules your first house. It also rules um, your 10th. And there is an emphasis in um, how much your body can take, how much your body can take in regards to the responsibility you're taking on. Maybe because Jupiter rules your um, 10th house, um, you're working a lot, the effect that it has on your body, it makes you tired, it makes you lethargic, Jupiter and Neptune. Um, and I want you to pay attention to how much you're willing to sacrifice energetically or emotionally um, for, for, for the sake of responsibility, right? Watch for being way too self-sacrificial this year is, is the best advice I can give you. Especially once you start to see some of the squares that play out the second half of the year. Um, it's a lot of being in tune with your body, feeling like your intuition is leading you or guiding you in some way, especially when it comes to making personal decisions or decisions relating to your career. Now, Jupiter and Neptune is gonna have you very dreamy, um, very um, idealistic, very, visual, very tapped in, and you may be feeling very inspired, but keep keep in mind, the very first couple months of the year may feel very lonely and isolated because you're gonna have a lot of planets going through your first house. Now it's great for you to be on your own, have time apart from other people sometimes to meditate and reflect. Um, so you're not absorbing other people's energies because I think you're gonna be a little bit more empathic this year than usual. So just keep in mind that um, salt scrubs, you know, cleanses, things like that, really getting adequate sleep is really important in the year ahead. So um, when it comes to your career though, because your first and your 10th house Lord are meeting up, some of you guys are gonna have more responsibilities or positive aspects happening in your career. You're in the limelight, people see you, your body's more visual than usual. You may be in front of screens, lots of pictures being taken. Um, when Jupiter and Venus are coming together or the sun in Pisces, great time to like take pictures, headshots, change your user profile pic, things like that because you're just gonna have more visibility and you're gonna be way, way, way uh, photogenic and just very attractive, especially when Jupiter and Venus come together. Ace of Cups. So it's about love, inspiration, being emotional, new relationships, new opportunities for relationships. Especially I think of like traveling for partners, meeting people in other places, um, possibly feeling like you're really in love with your body, loving you for who you are, being authentic, practicing a lot of self-love, giving a lot of love and new opportunities for relationships and renewal of relationships. So if you're in a relationship, it can get sweeter. You can have more um, affection and love. If you're looking for somebody, you can bring that in. You're gonna be very magnetic. I um, mean, a lot of people are gonna be drawn to you this year. So look for those 
aspects that you're seeing between Jupiter and Venus to really highlight and bring more of that to you um, because I think it's gonna be very beneficial. And just how you're communicating with Uranus also that's gonna be in your third house, I think that it's really gonna open up um, how you talk to people and how you interact with people and you're just gonna notice that you're mixing with different kinds of people this year. All right, guys, thank you for listening to this long video. I appreciate it. Hopefully this gives you more insight into um, what Neptune in Pisces and Jupiter in Pisces is gonna look like in 2022. Where are these two meeting in your chart? Let me know. How are you anticipating it's gonna play out? Is Jupiter hitting anything important in your sun, moon, or rising? Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave it below. As always, I appreciate your support. And if you would like to book a personal reading with me, I practice evolutionary and Western astrology with tarot and what I see clairvoyantly. You can check out my website below at beyondthevilletarot.com. Got some openings in February of 2022 if you would like to chat with me. I will leave you with that and hopefully you guys enjoy Jupiter in Pisces. Take care.